Hi, I'm Jeff Mucklin, and this is Science at Home, brought to you by the Nurture Nature Center. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how you can learn about physics in a playground. Physics is the study of matter and how it moves and behaves. Some of our earliest and most important discoveries in our understanding of physics came from experiments using tools like pendulums and gyroscopes and spring gauges. Scientists like Galileo Galilei and Sir Isaac Newton made very careful observations of objects in motion and laid out the foundations of modern science as we know it over 400 years ago. We can replicate some of these experiments using equipment that you'll find in a playground. A swing is an incredible physics laboratory. If I place this mass simulator in the swing and wait for the vibrations to damp down, it sits completely motionless. Now, I think most people intuitively think that objects don't move if no forces are acting on them. But there are forces acting on this mass right now. Gravity is a force that's trying to pull it down. But there is a tension force in this chain that's holding the mass up. Here we're seeing Newton's first law of motion, which states that objects in motion will stay in motion and objects at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts on it. This concept can be summarized in one word, inertia. Inertia is this property of matter that refers to its tendency to resist changes in motion. The, the pulling force of gravity is counteracted by the upward pulling force of the chain, and as long as these forces are equal to one another, the mass will not move. At this point, the whole system is in equilibrium, meaning that all the forces that are acting on it are balanced. So let's introduce an unbalanced force. I'm going to push on the mass, uh, and if I do that, it accelerates in that direction. It doesn't move in a straight line because it's attached to the chain. It moves in this swinging, arcing manner. Now, if I push on it harder, it accelerates faster. Uh, if I push just as hard on a heavier mass, it wouldn't accelerate as much. Let's do that. I'm going to double the weight by adding another sandbag. I'm going to try to push just as hard as before. It didn't accelerate as much, did it? Here we're seeing Newton's second law of motion, which tells us that in order to overcome inertia, we must apply a force. More massive objects need a greater amount of force to make them speed up or slow down. So let's set it in motion again and watch how its motion changes over time, over the course of, of the swinging action. As it moves outward, it begins to slow down. Eventually, it reaches the peak of its swing. At that point, it's lost all of its speed, and for a moment, it just hangs there. Gravity is not being countered anymore by the swinging motion, so the mass begins to fall, slowly at first, but gaining in speed until it reaches this point at the bottom of the swing. At this point, the force of gravity is completely countered by the upward pulling force of the chain, but the mass has now built up a lot of momentum, so it swings upward in the opposite direction from when we first pushed it. It will now swing upward like before, slowing down and then falling, and it goes like this, back and forth. Unless I push on this mass again, it will swing a little less high each time, and eventually it will come to a rest at its equilibrium point. You might be wondering why it should stop. Shouldn't the first law of motion tell us that it will keep swinging unless another force acts on it? Well, another force is acting on it, friction. Friction will slow it down and cause it to stop. Galileo was another person who was interested in the way objects moved. While observing uh, swinging chandeliers, he found that he could measure the amount of time it took them to swing uh, by using his pulse. He found that the weight of a chandelier did not affect the amount of time that it took to swing. What he did observe was that the length of the rope that the chandelier was hanging from was an important factor in swing time. Longer ropes lead to longer swing times. Somewhat surprisingly, he observed that the height of a swing did not affect the swing time. A chandelier swinging this much 
takes just as much time to complete one swing as a chandelier swinging this much. This turned out to be an incredibly important observation because it eventually led to the development of pendulum clocks that could accurately keep time. A seesaw is an excellent example of a lever, which is a kind of simple machine. So here I've placed both the sandbags on the other side of the seesaw. Uh, they each weigh 30 pounds, so that means there's 60 pounds uh, of force on that side of the seesaw. I weigh 150 pounds, so that means there's no way that those sandbags can support my weight if I sit over here. If I move towards the center of the lever, eventually there's enough of a mechanical advantage that 60 pounds of sandbags can support my 150 pounds of weight. Let's see how far I have to move in before they have enough of a mechanical advantage. Oh, seems like right around here. There. <laughs> I'm being held up, all 150 pounds of me is being held up by just 60 pounds of sand because of the mechanical advantage provided by a lever. A slide is a good example of another kind of simple machine called an inclined plane. If I take this pail full of rocks uh, and I lift it, using this spring gauge I can see that it takes oh, about five pounds of force. Uh, to lift it up against the force of gravity. So from this position with the pail on the slide, I can see that it only takes three pounds of force to hold the pail up against the force of gravity. And if I start pulling it, I can move it upwards against the force of gravity, but I'm only exerting four and a half pounds of force on a pail of rocks that weighs five pounds. Although I'm pulling with less force, I'm pulling these rocks a longer distance. This slide is about four feet high. This slide is about six feet long. So I'm pulling the rocks a further distance, but I don't have to pull as hard in the process. It's providing a mechanical advantage. If we go down the slide, it slows us down in a couple different ways. First, uh, by going down a slide, we fall a greater distance but there's also quite a bit of friction between us and the slide, which slows us down even more. But I'm going to see if I can change the amount of friction that I feel on this big slide behind me by going down the slide on a couple different materials. I have a rubber mat, which I think will increase the friction I have with the slide and slow me down a lot. Blanket, a moving blanket, and some cardboard. Going down the slide in just my regular clothes. Three seconds. Okay, going down the slide with a rubber mat, starting now. Barely moving. Ten seconds. Okay, going down the slide with the moving blanket. Four seconds. Going down the slide on cardboard. Less than three seconds. Over here on the zip line, uh, we can use the wheel and axle to reduce our friction as much as possible. But even here, there is some friction, and not just in the wheel and axle. As I move quickly through the atmosphere, the air itself becomes a source of friction. At high speeds, like for a car on a highway, this is a large source of friction. For a human walking or even running, it's not a very large force, but I can increase it with this. This is a runner's speed chute. And like a parachute, it expands in the air and it provides a large area for the air to push on. And it should slow me down through friction with the atmosphere. Air itself is a source of friction. For a fun at-home activity, download the linked PDF and try some of the experiments listed. Make sure to write down your results and see if you can rediscover the laws of motion. Clever men and women, use the laws of physics to make our lives better. Accurate clocks, more fuel efficient vehicles that are aerodynamic, bridges that are stronger and use less material are just a few examples of how helpful our knowledge of physics has been. I hope you can see that understanding the physics of fun and playgrounds can help you better understand how the world works and how you can help to change it. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.